Good morning. It's Saturday. Right there. That little one right there. And so it's July 25th, and we're going to rip that off. And we're going to go to the Grand Floridian. And it is, I don't know what time it is. It's early. It's like 8 something. Ethan is up and moving around. And our room is ready. So today is Epcot. I know you can't tell by the shirt, but it is. And we're going to go put our stuff in the room before we go to Epcot. You are there live as have our first look at the room. I haven't even been in here yet. Come look at this. So you're seeing what I'm seeing. Look at the floor of the balcony. Look at the ground. The ground. <laughs> ground. It's fake wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the balcony. Holy cow. So they still have the... I don't see... There's the... There's the wall. I don't know if that's a construction wall or an NBA quarantine wall. It's a quarantine wall. That's the core. That's the NBA section. They get. They have the whole section of the resort. But we've got a beach. We've got a corner of the pool. We have the beautiful little fountain, and we have a monorail. We can see the Grand Floridian itself, and we can see some DVC. We used to have that room. That was over there. That style room. <laughs> Okay, yes, technically we were over there in that turret, but still. Well, let's tell that story. So, we're staying at the DVC at the Grand Floridian right now. We have been booked here one time before. We were going to do a single night before a cruise. And, and no we, parks either. It was just No cruise. parks. We were just going to hang out at the resort for the day. So we fly in, rent a car. As we're driving from the airport to the Grand Floridian Resort, I get a phone call. It's Disney. They've overbooked the DVCs and they need to move us to the main building. Okay, fine, whatever. So we get here at the Grand Floridian, go to check in and we're given a room. It's on the concierge level. So it's third floor to the room. It's one of those corner turret rooms that is amazing. The video, there's video, right? Oh, yeah. But I think it's a cruise video. Yep. Way back when. You have to go back in the archives to find this one. Um, it was it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. So I look it up. It is a thirteen hundred dollar a night room. I was really bummed that it was just a one night trip. But we got to get on a cruise ship the next day, so that was okay. But we made sure we took advantage of the concierge lounge that day. And we got to see Cinderella and Prince Charming come and dance in the lobby to the band that was playing at Meisner's. It's, we've got footage of it. It was so cool. So we, this is our very first time staying here at the Grand Floridian DVC. So and we've owned here for since the Fantasy Cruise. <laughs> yeah, we've, it's been years that we've owned this. So resort. glad I insisted on owning here. <laughs> and it just never happened. So let me show you around. If we have any neighbors, they're thrilled with all this talking first thing in the morning. Right. So here is the room. Oh, look under the bed. Are those actually drawers? Is this room actually stretching? Stop it. They are. There are actually drawers underneath the bed. Mm. I've never seen that at a Disney resort. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So this room actually sleeps five. So this couch opens up into a, a double, I mean a queen. Mm -hmm. Here you have a queen size bed. That's cute. And then over here is the trundle bed for the little ones. 
and there's Dumbo in there. And it's actually a decent sized bed. I mean, I know a lot of adults that would fit on that. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jen. Oh, I think I put this in first. Not as heavy as I'm making it look. In my haste to get here, I didn't bring any adapters for the USB. And of course, this is the Floridian, so no. There's a, huh, there's a DVD player in there. And the remote is wrapped in plastic. I'm not going to touch it right. And there's another remote wrapped in plastic. Mm -hmm. That's one of their new things is wrapping everything in plastic. Mm -hmm. So we have a ceiling fan. You do not have a nightstand. I do. As per usual. And all the light switches. I have all the light switches. I'm in charge of the light. All right. Come this way. We have a little, speaking of light switches, oh, a white coffee maker. That's cute. And then under the sink, there's paper towels. Oh, be still my beating heart. Don't be hating. I also, they switched to this new dishwashing soap. I actually took one of these to work and it's in my drawer because I have my own silverware. So I keep my own dish soap at work. I keep Disney's dish soap at work. All right, up here in the cabinet, we've got a can opener and a cork, uh, cork popper thing. Paper stuff, I'm touching everything. Plenty of coffee, creamer, no Splenda. That's all right, I brought my own. Twinings, English breakfast, and green. You get a toaster, you get a full coffee maker. They do come with coffee. But I also bring extra with filters just to be sure. You know, the fridge. Come this way. Check out the bathroom. All right, light switches are inside. Wow. All right, so we have a tub and a toilet over here. And then over here, there's a door that's, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to break a nail. It's a pocket door. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not breaking a nail for this. I got it. How was that? Now we have two bathrooms. With the shower and the sink over here. Oh, I like this. <gasps> Products! Wow. Oh, it's got a rain powers thing and a regular handle. Okay, it says you. Oh, well, come on in. I'm not whipping the camera around. I know you're not. No. no. Rhonda could sign up for our Patreon if she wants to see what that looks like. Okay, you want to see what else we have? Did I just turn on the lights in the shower? Oh my god, the shower has its own lights. Yep. Look, another wrapped oh, package. Oh, the TV. The Cinderella TV. Sees no signals. And yet I can hear it. What's a Disney Channel? Oh, that was Jack Dana. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So you can turn on whatever you want in the morning as you get ready and watch TV. I don't want to keep scrolling away though. I'm not touching anything. It shows up and then it disappears again. Oh, we didn't pay our cable bill, that's fine. Oh, no. You know cool? You need to go work? They actually have stereo showers going on, so you can really maximize your efficiency. Is he the only, I don't know, there's not even a mirror over here. Oh, my God. The table there's is the couch. There's more in the bathtub. Is this the closet? Oh, what a closet! You're ringing. Don't wing. Go look in the closet. Slowly. 
I like the chairs. Ooh, ah. Uh, you got your life preservers. No, there's you got the ironing board we're going to take home. It's 1020. Epcot opens at 11. We are sitting in line waiting to park. We're okay with that. This is how Disney social distance people who get here before rope drop. Yay, 725 and we're moving. Woohoo! 1025. 1025. Yeah. What did I say? 725. <laughs> We've been in line for 12 hours. All right, you got anything to say this morning? I'm ready. Somebody do the mac and cheese dash. Let's do it. We're going to go. It's going to be so weird not going straight to the land, isn't it? But we're going to do it. We're going out to the, whatever that building's called. I was calling it the Millennium Falcon Village. But I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not it. Hi. Did you make it? No, I'm stuck in security. All right. Marador. Town gate opens. <laughs> I want to be where the mac and cheese is. <gasps> I'm looking forward to order at least one of those, what do you call them? Oh yeah, cake pops. Good morning. You are there live. Good morning. Festival market. I don't know what this is called. I know, I had to wait. Look at it. Wow. There's tables with chairs. There's very few. We have our pick of the litter. I also have hand sanitizer all over my hand. I can't do anything with it. So. Alright. There's a table for two back there in that corner. I'm going to okay. go grab that. Okay. Give me a bag. bag. You know what to do. I'm first. So first they haven't even started the microwave. Marie, the baguettes. Okay, a little bit of flash, that helps. All right, so this is the gourmet mac and cheese. There's a scoop of, uh, I think it's that garlic portion cheese. Yeah, yeah portion. Yeah. It's kind of warm. And then Ethan got the buffalo and blue cheese. That looks delicious. All right. Bon appetit. Okay. I heard complaints about the mac and cheese being cold so that the portion cheese wouldn't mix into it. My, mine was hot. Another plus for coming here first thing in the morning. I'm finally in here. It's not often I get in this building because it's usually reserved for highfalutin events that I can't afford. You know, it makes me think of something like white and sparkly. Oh yeah, jellyfish. And you know what also makes me think of? Jellyfish. They were red a second ago. Okay, I can't stop the flashlight, but there you go. That's fine, you needed it anyway. Okay. Nitro pops, mine is still steaming. All right. So the cake is really delicious. It's, um, I'm sorry, there's no other word for it. The cake is very moist. 
Um, we both correct. Yeah, we both thought the the nitroglycerin that they dunked these in was going to make the chocolate hard, but it didn't. It just kind of made it a little cold. They were steaming when I first got them, so it was kind of cool. This is lovely. I enjoy this. Did you like yours? Yep. Yeah. It, you beat me to it, and my word for it would have been moist. Because I was really expecting to be more of a hard shell to break through. Like the best thing I can compare it to, and this dates back, I think, is the Dilly Bar at Dairy Queen. I'm about to drop this. Can you grab it? So I thought it'd be like the Dilly Bar at Dairy Queen, but where it's that hard chocolate outside or whatever shell they use and then soft inside. Actually, I just thought the whole thing would be hard through and through, actually, because of the way they dunk it into the dry ice. Nitroglycerin. It's not nitroglycerin. Yes, it is. Oh, it's, uh, it's not dry ice. liquid nitrogen. Yeah. Liquid Same. nitrogen is dry ice. I feel very lied to. Uh, nitroglycerin is either for your heart or you blow things up with it. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you blow up your heart. Um, so the mac and cheese, I had the buffalo chicken. I was looking for more kick out of it and didn't really get it. And it's not like, I understand what theme parks, they tend to tone it down, but I know that they're capable of making things spicier. Um, so I was kind of let down by it after all the buildup, but maybe I should have had the gourmet mac and cheese instead. It's my takeaway. You should always get what I order. I always order the better food. Oh. You know this. Well, I, I heard good thing about the uh, buffalo chicken one, so. Whatever. YMMV. On to the next booth. Okay, here is Ethan's charcuterie tray. Well, this will take him about three minutes. Anyone who knows Ethan knows that. All right, it's 11.36. What is your, uh, what's your goal here? What's your plan? What did we just spend five minutes talking about? Something about food. Something about a boat. A boat? Um, yeah, we were talking about the uh, Canada Pavilion. Okay. Look at those Mickey ears with the hockey sticks. Yeah. And then from there, we can uh, either head back into Future World and do some rides or head over to Norway and check out the relaxation station over there. I am so hesitant to leave the spot. This mask is very annoying, so I'm going to be all about that relaxation station. Well, why, where's your other mask? I've got backup ones, but I'm going to wear this one for a while. So you have something to complain about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I want to enjoy the relaxation station. Ah. you got to work up to it. Got it. Be as uncomfortable as possible. Gotcha. I totally get when you need to pull the mask off to actually breathe or, you know, just take a minute or whatever. Or I reveal your identity to people so that yeah. they know you're in the movie. I understand it, but I call this reverse idiot. I don't know why I was doing this before, but I was. Oh, I know what it was. I couldn't breathe. Ethan walks too fast and drags me through parks, especially first thing in the morning. And I just cannot get enough air in through the mask when he's doing that to me. So once he slows down, then, then I'm fine. But we were like completely alone in the park we're at the one point. Dash. And I pulled it up over my mouth. I was like, oh my God, I can breathe again. Yes, we were doing the mac and cheese dash. Yes, I know. All right, we really don't want to give up this spot. This is such a nice little location and there's nobody around. And it's air conditioning and we have chairs. But and there's a potty. And there's a potty. But we could have sat at home and done all this. So. Well, you couldn't have done it like this. No, but we could have done it with the... Uh, on, on Amazon, I caught one of those deal of the day things that I... I got one of those, it's not an actual Roomba, it's another brand, but it's a, a robotic vacuum cleaner. And we have so much fun following this thing around. 
saving it from itself, really. Um, it does tend to find some things, and it really loves to vacuum under the bed. We don't know why, but it spent a good seven, eight minutes under there the first time, and then the next time Ethan let it out, it beelined for the bedroom, <laughs> went right under the bed again. So, but he said the last time he used it, it did the entire apartment, every room in the apartment it went through. And I came home that day and I could tell that it had been vacuumed. It looked really nice. The rug was actually kind of fluffy. And he said it limped back to its little, it docks itself when it's starting to get tired. It turns off the vacuum and it just motors its way, it finds its way back to its dock. And he's like, it was like limping on its way back to the dock. So I felt bad leaving it. It was like, it's like having a puppy. Well, that ended quickly. I guess this is supposed to be the last part of the, the tour. I don't know. Found him. Isn't that cute? It's cute, right? Now oh, where is it? There it is. Where at Epcot? Epcot Gator. There's the ramp. There's the gator. Epcot Gator. Alright, so we're going home. <laughs> I don't feel safe anymore. We have that at home. Wow. I feel safer at home because we're up higher. But this is an Epcot Gator. There you go. Gators are at Epcot. It's official. Yeah. Who had gators at Epcot for July? I never saw one here. Alright, this falls into the category of things we couldn't do four months ago. Four, four months. This is why uh, I'm deigning to condescend to do this. I normally would not. Run away! Run away! That's pretty cool. So they have a little symbol for every hotel. Glyphs for each thing. It's just Disney hieroglyphics. All the, all the DVC resorts. Drink more Ovaltine. Again! <laughs> so for all the millions of times we've ridden seas with Nemo, it finally dawned on me that the reason why the whole ocean knows to look for them is because they send out an abalone alert. And that's how they know. Because there's characters that shouldn't know who Nemo even is. Like Bruce. Yep. Yep. Until we reach the greenhouse. So I did this didn't Thank make you. recording last now, time. Sit now back, I'm home. Relax and enjoy living with the land. Come to our living laboratory where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. They missed us. Innovations like this one. We're really following the moon. ...efforts to produce bountiful harvests and still protect natural resources. So we were here exactly a week ago, and they have picked it, the lettuce. Now they need to pick this lettuce a year in this one small area. I want to go to there. It's just like. The Club 33 at Epcot. You can't go there. Those tables aren't socially distanced. All right, we are up in the DVC lounge. They, uh, the new regulations, they greet you at the top of the stairs, find out how many people, they seat you. You are allowed to go around and get your drink from the other side. Ethan just went to go get himself some coffee. And need some Diet Coke. Uh, and you have to keep your masks on unless you're actively eating or drinking. But, 
I'm sitting down, I'm in the air conditioning. He's going to bring me a cold beverage. And I'm in Disney World, so who cares? Ethan asked if we could change chairs instead of sitting in those kind of chairs. He asked for this kind of chair, which means I should be asleep in about four minutes. Yep. There goes the automobile. I got my Starbucks, now it's back to Mordor. Mordor is much more crowded now. Somebody blabbed. All right, so he pulls me into the marketplace. He doesn't even want anything. He just wanted air conditioning again. Well, then why did we leave the Epcot, the DVC thing? Because we had uh, We had a... Reasons. We, we had, well, one, they didn't have coffee. We had air conditioning. Yeah, that's a All right. I ordered the passion fruit guava thing again, but this time it's, like, creamy. It's not the refresher. I don't know what I did wrong or if I did it wrong the first time. I have no idea. I mean, it's tasty. But it's not liquidy. But it's not, like, clear like it was last time. All right, well, since we're here, go get me food. Mush. Okay, from the Ireland booth, we have seafood pie. From the Greece booth, Spanakopita. And they are both part of Festival Favorites. Festival of the Lion King. No, Festival Favorites. So my first bite of the seafood stew was a big piece of shrimp. This one, I think, is a big scallop. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Are you going to have some? Cool. It's hot. I had my triangle of spanakopita. How was it? It's funny when you're talking about shrimp, like, I didn't get any of that out of this. A live pianist up there, so. Um, anyway, all right, so to talk about the Spanakopita in greater detail, it was very buttery. Um, it was buttery or greasy, I'm not quite 100% sure now. Um, I don't really have much to say about it beyond that. It's, I can't really pick apart the ingredients and say how spinachy or cheesy it was. It just it was just very buttery in consistency. It was hot, so that was nice. <laughs> Your turn. It's got a good ratio of spinach and cheese and shell. Pastry is very flaky and crisp. Not burnt. So the bottom. You can't hear that over the piano, but I can. It is not a soggy bottom. Okay, so let's see if this time we take the hint. It's time to, to demolish this Morocco booth. I'm ready. Okay, I found a bench in the mostly shade. So now I just need Ethan to grab the dishes. He wanted the entire booth, so let's see. For the health and safety of everyone, please. Okay, beef kefka, hummus fries covered in a pile of stuff, and the chocolate baklava. Okay, I took a little bit no. of the hummus fry without any of the stuff on top, and it probably could have, should have taken that part of the cucumber, because man, that was spicy. And then I ate half of my, half of the baklava, that was amazing. If you like baklava, you will love that. It's very tasty. I think you tapped something when you cut it up that part. Oh, I think I went to like put you more where it would brighten you up a little bit. Okay, take two. Sorry about that. Didn't record. So the beef pocket needed more herbs and spices. Actually, I think it needed any. I didn't detect any. It was just a piece of meat some onions and a pita. Okay. And normally it's much, much, much better at that booth, so I'm disappointed, like, I was really looking forward to just eating everything on that booth. And now it's like one and out for that specific thing. Hummus fries are definitely making up for it, though. Especially in terms of the spicy hotness that I was missing in the um, 
buffalo chicken mac and cheese I had this morning. All right, so you finally got a winner, huh? Yep, so I definitely got the, the spice bomb I wanted. I know, right? Mm -hmm. My mouth is still burning. And now my ears are starting to, like, I know, my ears hurt. Out. Yeah. They don't hurt, they just tingle. No, it hurt. Yeah, my inner ears actually hurt from the spice on that. Yeah, but I knew I wanted to hit this booth hard, so I was trying to pace, you know, pace myself. So, sort of napping at the DVC lounge held. Sort of napping. You were sleeping. It was. It did get noisy in there, so I can see where it would be harder for you to stay asleep. But all right, I'll come back to you when you're on the baklava. So move down to the baklava. The hummus fries are mighty spicy. Even for you, huh? Well, in a good way, I like it. I almost died. The cucumber they put all over it is the answer, though. Oh, yeah, I should have gotten some cucumber with it. Because it really does cut down on it. Poop. Oh, well. So, pro tip. So now that the cucumber is out, cut down on the fire. Now let's try to polish it off with the chocolate bucket. Go ahead, start making noises. <laughs> it's very nutty, like almondy. Yeah. And chocolatey. Yeah. And you get the phyllo dough and yeah. buttery. Yeah. Yeah, there's walnuts in here too. Oh. Now the thing is, all these Middle Eastern style countries, not that Morocco is necessarily Middle Eastern, but it's the same basic stuff. Right. It's just everybody has their own take on it. Um, yeah, you can get Turkey and Greece and Morocco and I'm sure a lot of other countries make baklava. In fact, here in the Moroccan Pavilion, if you go inside Tangerine Cafe, I believe there's more than one variety of baklava on sale. But for those who can't or won't go in there, then this is convenient to just hit this booth and at least get the chocolate on it. It's definitely worth the stop for this. Yeah. You want to see our view? Pretty. All right, so it's not going to make the cut this time, at least it doesn't seem like it will, but this is definitely on our list of things to try out. I have more about, I'll have more to say about it later, but I just want to hurry up and get a shot of this. I don't want to be up in this guy's space next to me. Stuck decided to pose for some pictures. Yeah, you. Well, if they hadn't taken his temperature when we came to the park, I'd think he was yeah. sick. Not only did he do Journey into Imagination today. He's an American adventure right now. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Air conditioning and cushy chair. Woohoo! Alright, so we're going from one show to the next. This is like Summerfest. This is crazy. We do lots when there's nobody here. Mm -hmm. Get this set up here. There we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're also known as the Epcot Jammers. A lot of jam going on, so why don't we just jam on a one, two, bibbity boom! I take my first steps into Akershush. Wow. 
What? Are you kidding me right now? What? Never. What? That's where um, Bell normally would stand. You take a picture with her. I was a sad. You can't do that. <gasps> How will you stop? You've really never eaten here. I've never been in here. All right. So here's the cone buffet. All right. Let's see it. Yep. Let's see it through there. You get a live exclusive look. Ah. And then you order a hot dish off the menu, and they bring you in. And then the other four princesses would walk around and go from table to table. And take your drink order? Yes, the waitress, yes. Mm -hmm. Jasmine would take your drink order. Mm -hmm. Jamie's asking what Akershush means. I don't know what it means, I just know the Akershush song. Aker, Akershush, Aker, Akershush, Aker, Akershush, Super Akershush. Stop it. Now you know it too. Stop it. Sing it with me. Akershush is a traditional region and current electoral district in Norway, with Oslo as its main city and traditional capital. It is named for Akershush Fortress in Oslo. You're welcome. Well, this is um, not what was intended, but this is what happened. Okay, so we left the relaxation station. I had looked up a bunch of menus for a bunch of sit-down places. Ethan wasn't really feeling it. Um, well, so we were just going to continue around and do some more booths. And then we passed Hacienda, La Hacienda in Mexico, which did not come up on the app when I was trying to make reservations. And they looked open. And we both like stopped walking mid stride. And we're like, well, I would do that. We, neither one of us has ever eaten here before. So here we are in La Hacienda having Mexican for dinner. Uh, we have a visitor. All right. Table size. Do you need this one again? Flauta? No. <laughs> a giant tostada. A giant tostada and um, queso fundito. Which is and we were warned that this is pretty substantial stuff. With a hidden Mickey. Aww. That's adorable. Wait, let me get a picture of it. This bird is quite upset that it's not in on this action. So dessert is chocolate lava cake with raspberry coulis, I think. Shall we cut into it? Did it lose? A little bit. Oh, it's oozing. I see it. I see the ooze. You see it oozing? Slowly. Yep. Over here. Ooh. Mine is not. Mine is intact. But for how long, he wanted. Mm. It's very rich. It's very dark. Isn't it dark? Mm -hmm. Tasting it dark? Yeah. It's very good. I feel like it feels like a dessert on a cruise ship, but like really a good one. It's very decadent. It's very decadent. It's so good. I'm so glad we didn't split this. It might have ruined our marriage. Yep. So it's six o'clock on Saturday during flower and wine. And this is how we roll. Take it. We're very much rolling after all that food. I like it. Dinner was good. I like hot Waha Santa. I would eat there again. Yep. Okay, who wore it better? Mm -hmm. 
there's a picture. What? So we're walking off dinner around World Showcase one more time. I'd like to point out that the painting at France has changed to get with the times. Can't really see it through the trees, but the Skyliner's running. Hey, I finally remember the name of it. I've been calling it anything but that. So anyway, there's the new painting, if you know. So we are walking around one more time trying to get rid of some of the dinner. Some of the dessert. Social distancing a little bit here. So we're in France. And we were talking and um, I was asking him what kind, you know, what, what about today was his favorite. He said the lava cake erased all of his memory. He doesn't remember anything else that happened today. Well, if you watch the video, you remember what we did. <laughs> and then have opinions about it. Good luck, because the guy who records these whips the camera around. Right. So, I'm just going to do another lap here. Enjoy the low crowds. Try to digest this. Try to digest the food baby that Ethan has eaten. So to close an earlier loop, I took a shot of this funnel cake stand behind us, and they have this f uh, corn funnel cake. And normally I wouldn't cross the street for it, but thanks to this channel called Aaron and Claire that we discovered out of Korea, they had a corn recipes and they had a corn pancake that they made. And it was one of those that like, we were kind of watching in the silence and we both looked at each other like, is it weird that I want that? And we we're both thinking like, yeah, we want that. <laughs> so along comes this funnel cake and we're, today is not the day for it, but I do weirdly want to have it. Uh, it's not because of them. We saw it on Food Blog, but I think it was the same deal that at Food Blog we saw it like, ooh. I think one, it was like one right after the other. It was like we saw Aaron and Claire's thing and then Food Blog and then bam. So there you go. So when we try it, we'll definitely make sure that we uh, say something about it on video. So check out Aaron and Claire. Hello to Seoul. And if you watch some other video, don't worry about it. Just watch what you have. He's great. He does he, he does cooking yep. recipes. Yep. They're amazing. Oh yeah. And we've actually done one of them that didn't sound to us Americans like it was going to be something that would go. It was delicious. And we happened to have the ingredients that he was, was throwing together. It was rice and tuna and mayonnaise and, and lettuce. Lettuce. And green onion. And okay. green onion. And then soy sauce. And, yeah. And we had it all. It's amazing. Yeah. Wouldn't have thought so, but yeah. it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. As the day fades and dusk turns to night, Epcot comes to life in a global celebration of Disney music. Epcot was a seagoing park! a site we haven't seen for some time. That's got in the evening? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't really do evenings. And our last ride of the night. Woohoo! Before it goes away someday. Cruise food? Penguins.
He's so cute. The top side of penguins. How about this? No!